Greetings everyone and welcome to another lecture series as we look at introduction to forecasting and we're starting here with a simple moving average. Before we get into the thick of things, let's look at what we call a naive forecast. In a naive forecast, the forecast for any period is equal to the actual value from the previous period. So what we're seeing here is that we have actual number of units sold for January to April. Now, if we're doing a naive forecast for January, we really wouldn't be able to provide a forecast because we would need to have the actual number of units sold for the previous month, December, which we do not have. So since we do not have that, we can basically skip January. However, we can do a naive forecast for February because the naive forecast for February would be assuming that the same number of units sold in January, which is 250, would also be sold in February. So our naive forecast for February is 250. Our naive forecast for March will be 280 since 280 units were sold in February. For April, our naive forecast would have been 320 since 320 units were sold in the previous month, March. So this is naive forecasting, the simplest form of forecasting. Let's jump now into what we call a simple moving average forecast. So the simple moving average forecast looks at the average of the most recent months. So we can be doing a two week moving average where we're looking at the average for the previous two weeks. What were the average number of units sold in the previous two weeks? It can be monthly. So we could do a three month moving average where we're looking at the average of the number of units sold for the last three months. Important note here is that we cannot use the actual value from a month to forecast said month. For example, if we're forecasting October 2021, we could not use the actual sales from October as a part of that forecast. We must use previous months. We look at the past to forecast the future. So here goes. We want to do a two month simple moving average forecast for this company. So what we want is the forecast for each month will be equal to the average of the previous two months, right? The average of the actual sales from the previous two months. So let's look at January. January, we do not have the figures for the previous two months, so we must skip January. February, we have the, for the previous month, but we do not have the figure for January, for December. So we also skip February. However, when we look at March, we have the actual sales for the previous two months, being February and January. So we simply average those two months. So we pick up the 12 units from February plus the 10 units from March divided by two since it's only two figures and we get an average of 11. So our forecast for March is 11 units. Let's move to April. Previous two months, we pick up 14 units from March plus the 12 units from February divided by two since it's a two month average and our average is 13. So we have a forecast of 13 for April. On to May. For May, we pick up the 10 units from April plus the 14 units from March divided by two to give a forecast of 12. And we continue like that. For June, it's 14 plus 10 divided by two gives us a forecast of 12. For July, previous two months, June and May averaged gives a forecast of 13.5 units. And don't worry about the 13.5. Right, we know we can't sell 13.5 units, but what we know is that this figure is the actual forecast for July, right? Between 13 units and 14. So we're actually gonna round it off when the time comes. But for now, we want to see how close this actual forecast was to the actual sales for the month. So we'll leave it as 13.5. Move on to August. July plus June averaged gives a forecast of 12.5. And then the last month we're forecasting here is September. So 10 from August plus 12 from July gives us a forecast of 11 units for September, right? So this is a two month simple moving average forecast. All right, let's try another one. Let's do a three month simple moving average. For this one, we're saying we want the average of the previous three months. So of course we have to skip January, February and March since we would not have three previous months data to create the forecast. And we start with April. 
So 14 from March plus 12 from February plus 10 from January. And since it's three months, we're dividing by three to give a forecast of 12 for April. For May, 10 from April plus 14 from March plus 12 from February divided by three gives a forecast also of 12. Move on to June. We pick up the figure from May, April, and March divided by three gives a forecast of 12.67 units. And I like working with two decimal places for these forecasts. Right? Move on to July. June, May, April divided by three, forecast of 12.33. For August, we're using the three previous months. So July plus June plus May divided by three gives a forecast of 13. And last but not least, we have September. For September, we have 10 units for August plus 12 units for July plus 13 units for June divided by 3, which gives a forecast of 11.67 units. And this would have been our three month simple moving average forecast for the company. All right, thanks everyone. We're going to move on next to weighted moving average. Right, so see you in the next part of the lecture series where we look at weighted moving average. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to keep seeing more content. All the best, blessings and salutations.